Wait till you see what our guest has been up to. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss this. My name is Yvonne Lewis, and you're watching Urban Report. Urban Report. My guest today is Chris Lang, founder, producer, director at Livestream's Media Film Production Company. Welcome to Urban Report, Chris. Thank you, Yvonne. It's great to be here today. Yay! I'm so glad you're here. Oh, you have been in the trenches, and I know you have. I know you've been so busy. You were on, oh, it's been a while since you were here, and we've aired some of your other films, which we love, Single Creek. I mean, just we just love what God has used you to do. And now you have some new projects coming. And we just need to explore those, introduce those to our viewers, because they are powerful, powerful. So tell us what you've been doing since you were here last. Well, Yvonne, thank you so much, first of all, for the opportunity to, to reconnect with you on, on Urban Report. Last time we met, I was just getting started on this journey with, with a film project called Charm by Darkness. We had, we had started working with the Roger Morneau estate. Many of the viewers will, will remember this man of God who had been a demon worshiper back in the 1940s. And amazingly and miraculously, God used a, a precious couple, Cyril and Cynthia Gross, to study the Bible with Roger to deliver him from, from demon worship in 1946. Wow, demon worship. I mean, really, that is, it, it is so incredible to me that God reaches everywhere for us. There's nowhere that God won't go to reach us. Tell us a little bit about him, if you would, a bit more about Roger Morneau and who he was. Yeah. So, Roger grew up in a Catholic family in the 1920s and 30s, and he, um, he, he, he basically couldn't reconcile the teachings of the Bible uh, with those teachings of his church. And uh, at the ripe old age of 12, uh, Roger decided that God was a tyrant, and the uh, sort of the straw that broke the camel's back, as they say, was the teaching on eternally burning hellfire. And, uh, and also purgatory, which uh, Catholics, many Catholics still believe in this sort of uh, holding area between hell and heaven or between life and death and heaven. Well, Roger's mother died when he was at the age of 12, and that just, that just completely solidified his hatred of God, and he turned his back on religion completely. And so Roger, as the World War II broke out, he was a late teenager. He was uh, working on the merchant navy ships during the war, and also he was in the Canadian Army as well. He was French Canadian, and uh, after the war, God saved. By the way, God saved his life miraculously during the war, and afterwards he was invited into a secret society of demon worshippers, where he saw this what he thought was the spirit of his dead mother and communicated with her and. Uh, before long, he was, being he was being given gifts where he could win uh, at the horse track. He was, he was being shown in his dreams at night, uh, the winning horses. And uh, he started winning a lot of money in the 1940s after the war. I mean, $400 in one day was a lot of money, Yvonne, yeah. back then. Yeah. So, but Roger wasn't happy. Roger didn't have peace in his life. And his parents had warned him that if he ever played with evil, someday he would have to pay the price. And uh, one night, uh, he, was, he was really frustrated. He couldn't sleep because the secret society's high priest, they called him a priest in this uh, satanic society that he was a part of during this period, was pressuring him to become initiated on Halloween weekend, 1946. And uh, he, was, he, he sensed this danger. And so one night he couldn't sleep and he calls out, on, the, on his back, looking up at the ceiling. He's not even praying, he's just desperate. If there's a God in heaven that cares for me, help me. 
uh, within a couple of days, he, he met a man named Cyril Grosse at his uh, embroidery factory where he worked. And he found out that Cyril was a Christian that kept the Bible Sabbath. And uh, in one day, Roger had this, this conviction that Cyril might have some answers that he had been seeking his whole life. And what Cyril didn't know is that Roger had been worshiping demons and that within three days, Roger was supposed to sign up and get initiated on the other side. But during those three days, right before his initiation, God was saving Roger's life through the ministry of Cyril and Cynthia Grosse, who were newlyweds. And guess what, Yvonne? They were the ripe old age of 19. And Roger was only 20 years old at this time. These are not old people. Right. These are coming of age young adults. Wow. And that's why when I heard this story um, and I saw the original book, the, Roger wrote his conversion story in 1982, and it was originally published by Review and Herald, and the title was A Trip into the Supernatural. Um, what most people don't know, Yvonne, is that only half of that, uh, whole, only half of Roger's original manuscript was published. This is, this is the cover of that book, A Trip into the Supernatural. And uh, only half of that manuscript that Roger had written was published. And so when I saw the total manuscript that Cyril mailed to me a couple of years ago, when I started looking at this with Morna, Roger's estate, partnered with Livestreams Media, and we started working together to do a feature film about this amazing convergence story. But it was while I was reading this, this manuscript, this original manuscript that Roger wrote by hand, Yvonne, and um, Cyril and Cynthia had it typed in the 1970s, early 80s. When I read this manuscript, Yvonne, I felt this conviction that the whole world needed to see this. And by God's grace, I, I just prayed. I said, Lord, this is part of the journey. And so I called this, the, our friends at Pacific Press. And when they heard it, when they heard what happened, they agreed wholeheartedly to publish the full manuscript. Wow. And so la last year, Pacific Press put out this book, which is the first time the world has ever seen Roger's complete conversion story um, from demon worship. And we are so excited to be able to be working now on the feature film uh, that, this, that is based on this book. And we actually, since you and I met last year, we've actually been working with script writers um, in Hollywood. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money <laughs> because we were, we were poor. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we had, a, we had a lot of big dreams because God put this burden on my heart. And uh, so we finally hired a non-union script writer who has a heart for the Lord. I felt a conviction that he was a man of integrity. He and his wife were God followers. They're, they happen to be Sunday Protestants. And uh, after the first draft of the screenplay was finished, Yvonne, do you know that the, the scriptwriter's wife was so convicted that she should start keeping the Bible Sabbath after she read just the first draft wow. of the screenplay? Wow. Praise the Lord. Something? Praise the Lord. You know, you gave me a lot to chew on just in, in what you've just said. I want to go back a little bit and talk a little bit about Roger's life and then into yeah. the project. You know, one of the things that is so interesting to me, and, and I've told you this before, I think, is that um, mysticism is mm -hmm. one of the things, you know, spiritism, spiritualism, these are things that are creeping into the church. These are yes. things that Christians, unawares many times, are participating in, not the overt Satan worship, but just very subtle things. And what you're doing, and I'm so thankful that you're doing this, you're exposing a lot of the dark, the elements of darkness to people through Roger Morneau's life, and he was at the, he was at the end, that other end of demon worship, which is just, that's the overt kind of right. end of the line thing. And I'm so thankful that you and your team are bringing this to light because his whole life, after he gave his life to the Lord, his whole life was one of ministry, one of yes. faith walk. I've read his books and I'm, mm. he's just, I'm so glad you did this, this, these uh, films on his life and this tribute too that we're going to talk about in a bit. Mm -hmm. So he went through this and then you, you were introduced to the book and to the whole 
the whole journey that he was on, and you felt convicted that God would have you use your gifts to do films about this. Yeah, actually, I tried to reach out to Roger's family for several years, Yvonne, and I was in the middle of producing About Miracles several years ago. And I was so convicted that when I read his books like you, that these were stories, and I wondered, I, I, I just wondered if anyone had asked permission uh, from the family, if, they're, if they could have permission to do a feature film about his life story, his con amazing conversion story. Yes. And, uh, and it took me three years to get a hold of them, and finally God opened the door. And God's timing is, as you know, he, he's usually not early, but he's never late. <laughs> That's right. He's right on time. He's right yeah. on time. What would you yeah. say was the most um, poignant story in his journey that really grabbed you? What really, really grabbed you in his journey? Well, like you, I think that the... Um, I think that the, the generation we're living in that is so um, where, where the occult is the new normal, where, where honestly, Yvonne, the word occult is, is old school. That's right. To, to, to say somebody is in the occult, that is so old school now. That's right. Uh, mysticism, very much so, as you said, uh, meditation, spiritual formation, uh, contemplative prayer, Christian meditation, as they're calling it That's now. That's right. These are, the, these are Christianized versions of Eastern mysticism to, to contact what someone might think is God when they're in an altered state of consciousness. And so this has been an amazing journey. As I, as I, as, as I had this conviction that, that Roger Story, as you said, he was on the far other side of the spectrum as it relates to, to, to spiritualism. But I felt that because he was interacting with spirits that he thought were his, the spirit of his dead mother who had passed on, that we could, by God's grace, in this generation that is so saturated with Twilight and Harry Potter and uh, the, the, the Fox TV series Lucifer and making fun, making a mockery of the biblical concept of the great controversy, and that through Roger's story and through the witnesses that knew him, both before and after his conversion, that the world would be confronted with the biblical truth through a story. So that, see, we Adventists, we're so good at preaching. Yvonne, we have the best preachers in the world. Mm. And, 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 but, but we are living in an ADD culture where people might give you five seconds before they change the channel. <laughs> That's right. And storytelling is what God has put on my heart. It's put, he's given me this calling to tell stories that are not only inspiring, but biblically sound and life-changing testimonies through reenactments. And now this is our first feature film, Charmed by Darkness, based on the book, that we, we hope, with God's blessing, will actually challenge the world to, to think very deeply about what these spirits are saying. Yvonne, because the devil doesn't care what your worldview is. He will come as an alien. He will come as a spirit of your dead ancestors called ascended masters, which the, the New Age movement and the Freemasons all are taught to believe. Um, the, the witches who go into Summerland in some sort of purgatory. Uh, Neo-paganism, Yvonne, is the fastest growing world religion now. Is it and really? Neo-paganism? It is the fastest worldview in, in the world because people are tired of the old time religion. People are bored because there's no magic tricks, Yvonne. And you know what? The Bible tells us that we shouldn't seek something new, that we should seek the old path. That's, that's right. What I, that's what Isaiah tells that's us. That's right? right. And there's where we'll find rest for our restless hearts. Yes, yes. See, and, and the thing is, these, these things are Really, they're not new. They're just a twist on the old um, paganism. I mean, this is paganism, neo-paganism, new paganism. That's really what it is. It's like an, another form of it. But this, right. uh, this is, this Satan is up to his old tricks. He's just repackaged it. We have a clip of your, the video, the trailer for Charmed by Darkness. I want to take yeah. a look at it. 
Yeah, could I could I set, set it up? Could I, please. Could I set it up for the uh, for the audience? Please. Th th this is actually exciting to be able to share with your audience, Yvonne, and, and the reason is because God, I am so thankful to God, Yvonne. I can't tell you this is emotional for me. Yes. Because because Cyril and Cynthia Grosse became like my grandparents. They God kept them alive long enough. When I started working with Linda Morneau Hatley, Roger's daughter, she's the executrix of, the, of Roger's estate. It was, it was less than a year until Cynthia passed away from the time we started working together. And do you know, God was the only one who knew. He foreknew that she was about to die and coordinated the, uh, an interview with, with Cynthia and Cyril when they were still uh, healthy and they, they were able to, to go out for a walk. We were able to shoot B-roll with them. And um, what an inspiration they were. But here's the amazing thing. When, when our viewers watch this video, they, they should keep in mind that Cynthia was the only one who remembered where their actual uh, apartment address was in Montreal, where they studied the Bible with Roger. And, um, and she died three months after I interviewed them. Cyril was the only one who had video of him and Roger sitting together as friends. You're going to see that in the video. He filmed that with a, with a consumer camera in his living room in 1984. They were just hanging out talking. It's a casual video, and that's why it's precious, absolutely precious, because it shows the proof that these men were lifelong friends, and God was just starting to write their story when, uh, when you hear the conversion story from 1946, that was just the beginning for Cyril and Roger's friendship. So let's take a look. Great. He was a man of a singular focus, always ready to tell the story of his best friend, Cynthia, the unlikely friendship with Roger Morneau, and of a God who saved them all. The other boys and girls were loud and, and you know, made remarks and so on. But he would sit down and he'd just watch. And sometimes he'd say something, and when he said something, you thought about it. And that was interesting. And of course, I compared him with the others, and <laughs> he was far bet her in every way. I'm driving my rally across the tracks, and of course, not being an expert on the bicycle, my wheel got caught in the track, threw me over, fell flat on my stomach, and I was winded and couldn't get up. And she uh, ran over, grabbed me by the hand and pulled me off the track. And then she went back and pulled my bike off the track before the train got there and saved me. Another time, I almost drowned in, uh, in a lake, and uh, again, she saved me again. What happened? I married well, him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the things that he was doing was ridiculous, <laughs> really ridiculous, yeah. I was not an Adventist, but she was. We never argued about what, uh, what to eat, what to drink, you know, or going to church on Sabbath. I decided I'm gonna to go to church with her because if I didn't go to church with her, somebody else would steal her. <laughs> they married in 1944, both just 18 years old, and began attending church together in this building, the previous home of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Westmont District of Montreal. When the minister said, anybody here like to have Bible studies? And before I could say, not me, she said, we would. After I had taken the Bible studies from Elder Taylor, uh, I was coming from an area of not believing in the Sabbath. And I said a silent prayer. I didn't tell my wife, didn't tell Ella Taylor. And I said, Lord, if you want me to keep Saturday for my Sabbath, let me convince one person and I'll, be, I'll believe. And the race is about to begin. The horses are settling in now. And they're off. It's a quick release fly. Meanwhile, a French Canadian named Roger Morneau was winning here at the Blue Bonnets racetrack in Montreal. His time with a secret society of demon worshippers was paying off, but he had no peace or joy. 
His parents had warned him about playing with evil, and he knew that no one had ever gotten out of that secret society alive. So when I uh, was faced with the idea that he wanted me to be uh, initiated on the 1st of November of uh, 1946, I, uh, my friend says, yes, yes, I'm to that. I told the students three seconds of my goodness until the following week. And I went home that night, went to bed, and I couldn't sleep. About two o'clock in the morning, as I said to my, my perplexed state of mind, I said, there's a God in heaven who cares for me, help me. I was working as a worker in an embroidery factory. I was a foreman. Anyway, I went to this new place to get an interview to see if they would pay me more money and give me less work to do. Then he said, and if you want to make more money still, you can work Saturday and Sunday. In the meantime, he had a fellow working for him, and I didn't know who this fellow was, but he was Roger Morneau. And he told Roger, Monday we have a new worker coming in, and I want you to sit next to him and find out why he is a Christian and he keeps my Jewish Sabbath. And later on he said to me, Cyril, I want you to invite me to come to your house and you can tell me what you, what you know. So I said, okay, come this weekend. He said, no, this weekend will be too late. I didn't know at the time that he was a devil worshiper and he had only three days left before he would sell his soul. I remembered that I had just bought 28 Bible studies for busy people. I hadn't opened it yet, and I got home as fast as I could, and told my wife, I said, Cynthia, we have a fellow that wants Bible studies, and uh, you can turn the pages of the Bible while I read the notes. I said, now this fellow wants to come. I said, he cusses like a sailor, and he smokes like a chimney. I said, what do you want to do? She said, let him cuss and let him smoke. Cynthia and Cyril lived here on Corsall Street, about a 10 minute walk from the church. On the third floor of this building, they studied the Bible with Roger, and later a fire broke out that nearly killed Cynthia. So, yeah, that's what prayer was. Certainly. Yeah, absolutely. So, in a few days, I met you and uh, did Bible studies, 28 Bible studies in a week. And I decided to get a Bible, Bible Sabbath, first Sabbath, Saturday. And uh, a few months later, I was baptized in the Amendment Keeping Church. It was fascinating that he was actually sponging the information that we were giving. And he would repeat the paragraph or the sentence or the scripture, and it's been long gone out of my mind after I read it. And it, he could pick up things like that. And I think that's what it was. He, he was searching, and he found what he was looking for. Without Cynthia and Cyril, and I love you, Cynthia and Cyril, my grandparents wouldn't be married. My mom wouldn't be. I wouldn't be, and my daughter, my, my precious daughter. You know, and who knows, it's all eternity would be changed. You know, Sarah could have said, no, I'm selling my jazz records. Cynthia said, no way I'm gonna have a cigarette smoking, cigar smoking, cussing man in my house. It would have been finito, you know? And then who knows what lies my gra grandfather would have destroyed. The great master wasn't going to initiate my grandfather into that society to be a good man for this planet. It was to destroy people. You were uh, responsible for helping me to become a stronger Christian, while I was responsible for helping you to see the difference between what you believed at that time and the right. truth. So it looks like God has a wonderful, mysterious way of working with men. Right. We have a lot of memories. That's half of them. <laughs> wow. You know what impresses me about that 
Chris, is um, there's several things, but one of them is just the sweetness in their faces. Yeah. Their countenances, the grosses look so kind and loving. I can see why I can see why they became your grandparents. Well, Cyril, Cyril was like the grandfather I never had. My mother's father died when she was a teenager, uh, and my father's uh, dad died when I was three years old. So uh, it's like God gave me a, a grandfather figure who was such a warrior for God. And this is emotional for me, Yvonne, because this, this, some of this, this footage that the viewers are seeing will be included on a documentary, which will be a companion program to this feature film we're talking about, Charmed by Darkness. Um, because, you know, we're living in a prove-it-to-me age, right, Yvonne? Yes. Pe people can Google stuff, and they can find their proof. And uh, since we're in such a cynical society these days, I've been praying that God would open the doors and help us prove things that, uh, that would help to provide credibility for the things we can't prove. We can't prove that Roger was in any, in any particular secret society, but we interviewed people that knew Roger intimately well including his family members, including people like Doug Batchelor, who was close friends with the family. Uh, also, um, Cyril and Cynthia, who were the best witnesses of all, who were there in the 1940s. And they, they confronted demonic spirits themselves. Uh, and the devil tried to take them out. In fact, Yvonne, this story is so true that God actually revealed in an experience to me that uh, there are forces that are very, very nervous about this. Tell us what happened. You know, I asked Cyril uh, a couple of years ago uh, to, if he would be willing to send me the, the original Bible study pages that you saw in that video. Uh, I was convicted, Yvonne, that the world will be convicted by the Holy Spirit to want to study the, the actual study that Roger, that saved Roger's life. And so I asked Cyril one day, I said, Cyril, I told him what, what I was convicted about, and I asked him, would you, would, you be, would you trust me to mail me these original Bible study pages that you've saved for 70 years, uh, almost 70 years? And he said, yes. So sure enough, a few days later, I got these precious pages in the mail, and the, yes, those are the pages. And I, I started, the night I started scanning those pages, Yvonne, I've lived in this house 20 years, and I've never seen this, and none of my neighbors ever have either, and they were witnesses to this. I'm in my house after dark, and I'm starting to scan these original pages, and a huge black bear walked into my neighborhood down the street. At least five of my neighbors were outside talking when this bear showed up. He sat down in a neighbor's yard across the street from my house, and then got spooked. And he ran full blast about 20 feet from my front door through my front yard and crashed through my double-sided privacy fence as if it was toothpicks. Wow, look at that. And that's your door, that's your uh, fence right there? We had double-sided privacy fence. And that 400-pound that pound, pound black bear leaned on that fence and broke the four-by-four four posts. And then he just climbed through the hole that he made for himself. Mm -hmm. uh, and kept on going. And I was so impressed that night, Yvonne. My neighbors, five of them, had flashlights in hand, and they were knocking on my door. They didn't know I was home. And they didn't know what I was doing. I was scanning these Bible study pages. <laughs> and they said, you won't, their eyes were as big as saucers. They said, you won't believe what just happened. And so they took me outside with their flashlights shining in the dark, and there was the hole. And that picture you just saw, I took the next morning. But I shook my head, Yvonne, because um, I think the Lord wanted to give me a personal experience mm. to let me know. Again, I've lived there. I've lived in this house 20 years, and we've never seen a bear on this street before. Right. I mean, imagine it, it's so ludicrous. You know, you're just doing something in the house, and there's a bear in your front yard. I mean, that's just so... You just can't, it's unfathomable. You just can't imagine a bear. Where did he come from? Exactly. Where did he come from? And it's so interesting that he was, you know, he got angry or whatever and came at you yeah. while you're while you looking at those Bible studies. I was scanning them for the world, Yvonne. Mm -hmm. And someone didn't want, someone was very unhappy about that. Yes, and yes. And God, God wanted the world to know through, through my personal experience that this story is absolutely true. I have no doubt in my mind. And of course, we, we have witnesses, like I mentioned just now, 
But that's not the only thing that happened. When this book was being typed for Pacific Press, the woman who the woman who typed the pages of this book to Charmed to by Pacific Darkness. Press, Charmed by Darkness. This book that the screenplay is based on. Um, while she was typing at Yvonne, she was convicted to start keeping the Sabbath, and she was not a Seventh day Adventist. Um, and the first Sabbath that she kept intentionally before the Lord, she and her husband were driving to see a friend in their van. And they saw a, this is a new term, you can Google it. I didn't know it until I heard it. Shadow people following them while they were driving to see their friends. When you Google it, you'll see that the definition is dark apparitions with red eyes. Ghosts were following her and her husband that day on Sabbath while she was going to see her friends. And of course, um, we know the ghosts are demonic spirits. And she knew that too. She knew that the demons were trying to distract and discourage and intimidate. And you know, she sent me an email the next day and told me about this. And she said, you know what, Chris? She said, I'm not afraid. And the, and the last sentence I'll never forget. She said, I am, it's so amazing how quickly God works when the ignorance is lifted. Mm, mm -hmm. And that's what these films, the, the, these projects of yours are meant to do, to educate, to inform, and to let people know that these things are real. You know, a lot of people, Chris, think that, that evil spirits aren't real, that there's no such thing as Satan, that there's, right. you know, that there's just um, ignorance, but not, not evil. And in fact, some of the Eastern religions, uh, one of their tenets is to blend or balance good with evil. And so, you know, one of the things that you're doing with your films is you are unmasking evil. And you are also unmasking the good. You're showing the contrast between God's way and Satan's way. And of course, he doesn't want people to know it because one of his tricks is denial. You know, right. he doesn't exist. So um, we're so happy that you're doing that. What are some of the other things that have happened since you started making uh, this film? Well, you know, one of the things that, that came up, Yvonne, was that a lot of people were a little bit confused. They were trying to figure out, is Charmed by Darkness a feature film or is it a documentary? Mm. And, um, and I said, yes, it's both. <laughs> you said yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. yeah. And it was during that time, right after I saw you last year for our last program together, uh, actually a friend of mine who's, who's interviewed, one of Roger's very close friends, she, she was diagnosed with end-stage cancer. Her name is Carol Squire. And she passed away this year, Aww. and she's resting in Jesus. And, mm -hmm. and Cyril, of course, just died about a few weeks ago as well, and he's resting now from his, from his battle. But he loved God a lot, and I can't wait to see him again. Carol sent me all of the personally signed autograph books that Roger gave her uh, 20 years ago or so. These are very well-known books among Seventh-day Adventists. Roger was well-known with his prayer ministry. Uh, he had thousands of people who would call him and ask for intercessory prayer. So many of these books that he wrote were about the miracles that God, that God worked when he prayed for people. Mm -hmm. Well, well... One of the books that she sent, Yvonne, that I, was, that I was aware of but I had never read was this book. This book titled Beware of Angels. And uh, I knew the basic story about it. And quite frankly, Yvonne, I wasn't going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> and because you know the story, you know why. Yes. Um, share, share some of the story with us, if you would. This, this was Roger's last book that he wrote, Yvonne, before he passed away in 1998. And this book is a sobering account, true story, of a Bible study group in Grants Pass, Oregon, that happened to be Seventh-day Adventist Christians that were seeking a closer walk with the Lord, where they began to fall off the wagon, as it were, as they started asking God to let them talk to their guardian angels. Mm. And, and this story, Beware of Angels, Roger actually interviewed the people who were involved uh, in this murder case. It actually, at, what happened to this group, Yvonne, essentially is they fell into spiritualism. Mm -hmm. And a couple of people in their group ultimately murdered somebody else who was a member in the group. 
and it was all because they heard voices and these these spirits were telling them that they were from God and that certain people needed to be destroyed. Um, it's a long story, but by God's grace, we've decided to do a documentary uh, to use it as a as a as a core companion program to Charm by Darkness for the very reasons you were just talking about. We're living in a world that believes that the immortality of the soul is is as normal as us breathing and talking here right now. That's right. There are there are channelers and mediums that have uh, daily shows on on YouTube that are being watched by curious people. Curiosity, as they say, kills the cat, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here's the thing, Yvonne, there's real power there, but it's not from God. That's right. And, and that's something, Chris, that we really don't need to underestimate because there is power there. There's no doubt that there's power there, but what is the source of that power? And once you start tangling with that, it is a downward, downward spiral. You know, the Bible forbids familiar spirits. It That's forbids right. communication with familiar spirits. So many times I think uh, Christians want a deeper spiritual experience and they're seeking a deeper spiritual experience and so they will begin to you know seek out these things like trying to talk to angels and having your angel talk to you and all that kind of thing and before you know it Satan who is who masquerades as an angel of light can deceive you that's sure. why Jesus said, be not deceived, because he knew that at the end of time, Matthew 24, at the end of time, people would be deceived. People and the would reason be deceived. that they are deceived at the end, Yvonne, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us that the reason people will be deceived is because they did not receive, they did not have a love of the truth yes. so that they could be saved. And so we want to share the truth with love, but we want to be, we, we want to be careful to tell what God tells us to tell. I feel like John the Baptist because, you know, I just had a call from a, a, a script writer from Hollywood two days ago. And do you know what? I, th this movie is being made for her. And, sh and, and I realized God was affirming it. While I was on the phone with her, Yvonne, this is just one of many people out there who believe they're Christian, essentially, but they have a new age worldview about the cosmos and about God and about how everything is interconnected and how we're, we're all immortal beings, that we were always were and always will be. And ultimately, what happened to her, and this is how deceptive the devil is these days, is even for Christians, they're starting to see these manifestations. Her son passed away years ago, and she actually started writing books about the message, messages she was getting from her, her son who started appearing to her. But here's what's interesting. She said, people ask me if I'm a medium, a channeler. And she said, no, that would be evil. I didn't conjure this. this I didn't conjure my son. He just appeared. And by the way, Yvonne, he, he appeared in a materialized human form. He wasn't just a spirit. He was actually a physical being wow. that walked into chill. her room. I have a chill right now. She, she was in a room and the, that demon actually manifested in flesh as her son. That's right. Third and she dimension. was meeting with him. That's right. And wow. he was thanking her for sending out the message that everything is light and love and it's eternal and it's all of these ethereal messages that are supposedly light and truth from heaven. But this is what you just quoted the scripture that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. And it is so deceptive now, Yvonne, because th that's, what, that's what I feel God's put on my heart for Beware of Angels, is to use this Bible study group of Bible believers <laughs> who thought they couldn't be deceived. That's and a great point. Ultimately, the lie was so beautiful that they had to disengage their intelligent faith, the things that they knew the Bible taught, to the point where they were asking questions of these beings who claimed to be from heaven. And literally, they came to this, they would come and they would ask these, these angels to come, and the angels, sure enough, eventually started showing up. And they would, and, and I actually went to the police department in Grants Pass, Yvonne, and, and they actually allowed me to go through 10 boxes of police evidence from this murder happened, by the way, in the late 1980s. So they kept all the murder, since it was a murder, they kept all the evidence. And do you know, I spent four hours in the police department, Yvonne, 
And I saw page after page after page, and I took more than 500 pictures in the police department. And one of those pages includes a, a many questions and answers to these angels. And do you know these Seventh-day Adventists who know the truth about death, ask the, ask the angels, what happens when we die? And would you be surprised at all that these, these beings said that the spirit returns to God who gave it, pretending that they're quoting scripture. And of course, that is scripture, but we understand what the Hebrew word about spirit means right. in the Hebrew. Right. It, mean, it means breath. It right. doesn't mean an intelligent, conscious entity that somehow separates from our body. In fact, the viewers may not know this that the belief in the immortality of the soul actually entered, infiltrated the Christian church around 200 AD with this Gnosticism that came from Greek philosophy, from Plato. It was a pagan belief that began to be prom promoted in the Christian churches. It was not from Christians that this, that this came about, and it slowly made its way until it became tradition to where Marian apparitions are all over the place. And Why? paganism is truly now and, 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 and Protestants don't even realize that it's a, it's a form of idolatry Absolutely. to actually believe. You know, to believe that their loved ones are alive. You know, and you said something, Chris, that really resonates with me, and that is that when you disassociate what Scripture says from your experience, you can have a problem because the experience can be deceptive. The, that, that whole experience with the angels and them beginning to trust more what they said than what the Bible said, that's where the dissonance came in. And that's, that's something that we have to truly guard against in these last days. We have to truly guard against taking our experience, putting our experience above the Bible. That's right. Because yes. the experience can be a deception. And if you cannot, if you don't know the word well enough to test your experience against the word, you are in trouble. That's why we're to study. Because otherwise, Satan will, he will deceive us if we're not, if we're not grounded in that word. So what you're doing is phenomenal. Well, I praise God, and you know, we have a movie trailer to show for Beware of Angels. Do you know uh, Adventist Review is teaming up with us to do a pre-release worldwide screening uh, on Halloween weekend this year. Wow. And so we're excited to be able to share this film with the world in its pre-release form and uh, hopefully get the final cut released before Christmas this year, that's, God willing. That's tremendous. Let's take a look at that trailer. to see angels. God has got a special job for you. Beautiful, glorious angel. They will appear to people to whatever people want them to appear as. I saw this large saucer-shaped object hovering. I looked again, and sure enough, there it was. Eventually, I had a personal spirit guide that appeared to me in an incredible visionary experience. He now is presenting himself as an angel of light. For all the people that want to talk to their dead father, their dead sister, or their dead best friend, I could pierce that veil and see these spiritual beings that I thought were dead ancestors who have passed on and now have received these bodies. You didn't know you had this power to create things and you didn't know that, yeah, you're God too. Who do you serve? I said, no one. He said, no, nah, no, nah, everybody serves somebody. Now who's it gonna be? I said, well, myself, I guess. He said, so be it. I reached out to Roger Morneau. Wow. Tell us about the people that were on there and some of their experiences. Yeah, um, it's, it was very exciting to finally see God show me how all of these stories would fit together, Yvonne. 
um, because you can see how varied they are. Yes. Um, one of them, you know, the first one that you saw, uh, of course, is, is Roger's grandson, Michael, who gives an incredible uh, sort of backstory for all the things he learned from his grandfather about last day deceptions. Uh, and then you have these people who were delivered from the occult, uh, people like uh, Mark Clemenson, who was uh, uh, actually has been interviewed on 3ABN in the past. It's a very popular interview on YouTube. Um, he has a dramatic story of how he learned about the truth as it is in Jesus and about death. And he, he became a Seventh-day Adventist Christian and, and he left that life and actually the devil tried to kill him. He has a very dramatic deliverance story and we reenacted uh, that in his backyard up in Vermont uh, recently. So that was a real blessing. Will Barron uh, is a, was a former New Age priest uh, and God delivered him from a very abusive situation where a spirit guide, and you know, you were talking about mysticism coming into Christian churches. That was really coming into full swing in the 19, uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, and, and actually spirit guides were actually uh, impressing will to infiltrate Christian churches to start teaching Christian meditation. And so he was calling himself a new age Christian before he even became a Christian, a real Christian. You know, Chris, the whole idea of Christian meditation, you know, the Bible teaches, of course, that we are to meditate, but it's to meditate on the word, not, med not empty your mind and meditate. That, it, you know, it's so interesting to me that there's the true and the counterfeit. God has the truth. Satan has the counterfeit. Satan wants you to empty your mind so that he can fill it. <laughs> well, the word, the, the Bible says that we're to meditate on the law day and night, you know, those kinds of things. But Satan Amen. wants us to empty the mind. So, you know, that whole idea of Christian meditation, it's, 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 an, it's an oxymoron because it's not, it's like Christian um, transcendental meditation. Yeah, what people right. don't realize, that's right, Yvonne, what people don't realize is that they're being sold, uh, uh, they're being sold a, a bunch of goods that ultimately compromise their, the will. The will is what controls all the decisions and choices we make. And when you silence your mind and, 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 and center down, as they like to call it, um, you're actually altering your conscious state to the point where suggestive thoughts can be inserted against your will. And you, you, you really are in a vulnerable state mentally and, in, and, and because your subconscious now can be tapped by other spirits or other voices. Um, and it's in that place where they think they can find and hear God speak to them. But, you know, ultimately, um, that's, that's the truth that we're trying to get out. And I'm not sure yet how much of that we'll be able to cover and beware of angels. But, but it's, it's very exciting because I didn't know a lot about Christian meditation before I started on this journey of on it. And it is, it is shocking how normalized it's become in Christianity. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I've, I'm working on this um, booklet on what's wrong with yoga. I did one on acupuncture and now I'm doing one on yoga. And one of the things that many Christians who are practicing yoga don't know are that the stretches, the poses are mm -hmm. actually worship poses to Hindu gods. Right. And so, you know, some people will say, oh, it's just stretching. But the, the sequence of those stretches, the deep breathing, they are preparing you for a spiritual experience. And that's the release of the Kundalini, which is that, right. that, that energy. So right. my serpent power, serpent, serpent power. That's what Kundalini means. That's right. That's right. And so when you look at how there's this, this meshing of Eastern mysticism and Christianity, you know, these are the frogs that are talked about in Revelation, you know, the, the frogs, the evil spirits and stuff like that. It is to me, we are living in such an amazing time in Earth's history where spiritism is at a peak. And Ellen White says, it's going to be at an all time high. And we are experiencing that right now. So this film that you're doing, this documentary slash film is just it's amazing. How, how are people going to be able to, to see it? How can they access it? 
Well, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we're planning on doing a pre-release screening worldwide in partnership with Adventist Review on Halloween weekend. So if people want to sign up for our newsletter at lifestreams.org, they can uh, find out more uh, uh, about specifics in terms of, of that screening that's coming up because it's being formalized right now. But also the, the release dates. We're still making plans on the distribution for this, Yvonne, um, in terms of whether or not we'll wait for a digital platform release and DVD release uh, and first do a road show where we actually go and meet in some of these cities and towns and actually bring this as a tool to, to help to forge conversation about Bible truth for these very reasons why you're talking about it. We're living in the very last times of Earth's history and people are asleep. Christians are sleeping and Jesus gave us the parable of the ten virgins right after Matthew 24. Right, The very next portion of Jesus speaking is the ten virgins after he gives us the signs of the end of the world, right Yvonne? Yes. So yes. It, can't, it can't be a coincidence that, that it's time for God's people to wake up and, and and uh, pursue a walk with Christ that they've never ever hungered as much as they need to hunger today for it, Yvonne. Because you know what? Jesus warned us, don't be deceived. That's don't right. Don't be deceived. That's don't right. Don't be deceived. He kept saying it over and over and over. And he said, by the way, if it were possible, even the very elect. <laughs> that's right. Be deceived. That, absolutely. So. And that's the thing, you know, we, we just have to keep, we have to be sober and be vigilant. As it says in Peter, be sober and be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. So he, it's, we cannot just put our heads in the sand and we also can't practice syncretism. You know, I'll take a little bit of this and a little bit yeah. of that, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and make my own thing. No, that's what New Age does. You know, I'll take a little bit of Buddhism, a little bit of Hinduism, a little bit of Christianity and just kind of mix it all together and it's my truth. You know, well, I'm glad that you mentioned that, Yvonne. How much time do we have left? I can't see it We have out. six. We have Are about we six minutes, yeah. One of the interviews is this girl, Holly, that you see in the trailer. You know, she was very much into the secret and New Ageism in the 90s, and she had grown up in a Christian home. But that's exactly what happened to her, Yvonne. She started taking pieces and parts of different worldviews and putting them together. The problem with all of this is that it marginalizes Jesus. And because the devil can't get rid of Jesus, he has to make him one of the teachers, like uh, like Buddha and like Gandhi, like Gandhi and and uh, Muhammad, right? So they they try to make him one of the ascended masters in their in their worldview. But the thing about Christianity that's so exciting, Yvonne, that they're starting to call us fundamentalists. <laughs> yes. Is that, is that we true. actually believe that the Bible is true and that Jesus really is God because that's what he claimed. And so he can't be, he, he either has to be who he said he was, or he was the greatest liar that ever walked the face of the earth. And so the devil can't have it both ways, and yet people have been bamboozled by this light, by this beautiful package. And as I say, sometimes the lies are too beautiful, and we, as we saw in Beware of Angels, which this movie will, will show the truth behind this Bible study group that fell into spiritualism. They knew the truth. And yet the, the lie was so beautiful, Yvonne. So we, we, um, we are living in an age, as you said, of syncretism, where everything, where, where your truth is your truth, you choose your own path, and you create your path. Yeah. And, there, and, 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 and this is the last thing I would share with, believe, with uh, viewers today that makes me so excited about this, this walk we have as Christians. What makes Christianity exclusive and completely different, it's the only, it's the only worldview that actually can bring rest to a restless heart. Yes. Because this is the religion, Yvonne, that teaches us that we have a creator that actually planned your days, Psalm 139, before there was one of them. He already planned all the days of your life. And you're the only one like you, Yvonne, in the whole universe. Yes. Because God is a personal God, and that's what Christianity brings. The rest of this syncretism that we're seeing in the world with New Ageism and, and this relevant Christianity, the mysticism, it really does away with the deity of Christ, and it takes the personal relationship, the intimacy that we have with our Creator completely out of the equation. Because Jesus said in John 14, no one comes to the Father except through me. 
And what happens with Christian meditation and all this mysticism that's come in is you don't need Jesus to talk to God if you center down and go into that altered state. You can talk to someone that you think is God, but it's not the biblical God, Yvonne. Mm. You know, Chris, wow, that is, that is so deep because when you think about it, the other religions don't encourage that intimacy, like you mentioned, with God. The fact that we can have intimacy with God through Jesus Christ is that that is unique to Christianity. What they have essentially is is a coldness that they claim is warmth and peace, but it's a cold peace, Yvonne, because for them, God is a force. That's what witches actually say to each other, may the force be with you. It, God is an, imper an impersonal force of which you and I and the whole, every animal, it's pantheism. Right. It's paganism, pantheism. Absolutely. You know, and so for them, God has no person. He's not a person. He's a force. Right. And, and that's a cold way to live, Yvonne. Yes. Well, you know, again, if you're asked to search within, you know, go deep inside yourself, well, I can't do anything for myself. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if my God is me, I'm in deep trouble because what can I do? Preach on, sister. You know what I'm saying? That's so true. Our God we is great. He lives within us, but he is he's separate from us. He is God. He is the creator. We're the creatures. And Amen. the moment we get that twisted, we are in trouble. Tell us what you need. What do you need to complete? You have about a minute to to complete this project, what do you need? Well, we're, we're in the middle of still paying off our script writer, our Hollywood script writer. We need $10,000 right now, Yvonne, to be honest. Okay. Um, and our, our script is completed and we're in the process of fundraising. If people want to give us a call, go to our website, livestreams.org. If God puts it on your heart, if you're watching viewer and you have resources and you're, you know Jesus is coming soon, um, this, this, is, this is a journey of films that rips the mask off of the deceiver. And so uh, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. It's going to be a multi-million dollar project, this Charm by Darkness feature film. And of course, we also have the documentary coming out later this year, Beware of Angels. So it's been a long journey, Yvonne, and I'm looking forward to the next projects God has for me. This is very heavy material, but we serve a great God. And so I'm very honored to, to uh, be able to share with you today. Well, we so appreciate all that you're doing, and we know that it is a, um, it is not an easy journey, but we also know that, as you said before, we serve a great God who will protect you during this time because you are going, you are on the front lines, brother, with this, on, you know, it's, it's a dark, it's a dark place, but because of the light of Jesus Christ, you are safe and protected because the angels of the Lord encamp round about him that fear him and deliver him. There, there are people of integrity that Jesus wants to save. Yes. And they're, and they're deceived right now. Yes, that's right. And so this will help to bring them out. Thank you so much. And may God continue to bless you in all that you do. Thank pray you. for Chris. Pray for his, his projects. Pray for him, please. Thank you for joining us. Join us next time. You know why? It wouldn't be the same without you.